Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Monday, October 26. Today's first reading comes to us from the fourth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It reads, Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is fitting among holy ones. No obscenity or silly or suggestive talk which is out of place, but instead thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no immoral or impure or greedy person that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. So do not be associated with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. St. Paul's admonition to the Christian community in Ephesus is clear with the last line of today's selection. Live as children of the light. In other words, we're called to live as disciples who follow the light of Jesus Christ in our lives. And if we live the lives of thanksgiving, as suggested by St. Paul, we are truly focused on giving thanks to God for all the good things he has brought into our lives. And this attitude of gratitude makes it easier for people to turn away from immorality, impurity, greed, obscenities, rumors, ill talk, and other sins. Pride, which is the source of all sin, convinces us that we are not dependent on God or that we can do whatever we want with our lives. However, living a life of thanksgiving is truly a check against pride because our focus is on God and not on ourselves when we live in thanksgiving. As I've mentioned before in the Daily Reflections, there are some people who struggle in recognizing God's gifts in their lives. But I promise you that if you focus on finding God's gifts in your lives, your lives will be changed by this knowledge. We also heard in today's reading that St. Paul is reminding the community in Ephesus about the importance of of addressing sins that are present in their lives. His words are strong, but they do reflect truth. If someone does not repent of his or her sinfulness, they are going to close themselves off from God. Sin, by definition, is a privation of of the good. Since God is truth, goodness, and light, a person abiding in sin cannot be a child of the light. Again, sin is truly a privation of what belongs to God. So therefore, the problem is not that humans are prone to sinning. God knew this, and this is why Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. The problem is when we don't do anything about our sins. When we live in our sins, we slowly close ourselves off to God, because we've reached a decision in our minds and hearts that we're not going to repent of our sins. And if we reach this conclusion, pride is taken over. We become a God unto ourselves because we now believe that we are equal to God who is all good and deserving of all our love. Our pride deems that we no longer need a Savior. And I think all of us can see how this logic is flawed. And how this can lead to trouble in our lives. So I hope and pray we never find ourselves reaching this conclusion. But there's good news even if we do reach this conclusion. Or if we're just simply struggling with our sins. If we do fall into sin, brothers and sisters. No matter how grave, there is always a way back to God. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church reminds us of this reality in paragraph 982 it says there is no offense however serious that the church cannot forgive 
There is no one, however wicked or guilty, who may not confidently hope for forgiveness, provided his repentance is honest. Christ, who died for all men, desires that in his church the gates of forgiveness should always be open to anyone who turns away from sin. So as we start this new week, this last week of October, let us commit ourselves to living a life of thanksgiving, where we strive to root out sin in our lives. May this be a week where we strive to become children of the light who truly reflect God's call to discipleship. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. <laughs>